welcome to another command block tutorial. Today's video we're going to be going over the damage command, uh, how to use it, a few ways that you can use it, as well as addressing a few concerns that I saw in the comments of my last video. Alright, to start off I just want to show you this command that I'm using. This is mostly for display purposes. This is going to take anything that's not a player, that is not an item, not an arrow, and doesn't have the soldier tag, it's going to teleport itself to wherever it's currently standing. This is just to make sure the mobs aren't trying to move around while I'm doing my demonstration. All right, in this first example, you can see we have a simple damage command. We use the word damage, then the entity that we want to target. In this case, we're just using the closest entity. We're going to deal 10 damage to it. So if I spawn this enemy in, you can see 10 damage. And you'll see that when I kill it in three hits, that's enough to go husk. And this number here, we can adjust. Say we want to make it 100, it's going to instantly kill it. So that number, and you can make it really low, you can make it all the way down to one. And that's gonna take a really long time to kill it because one is only half a heart. And basically you can adjust, there's some other stuff you can do from there, but this is the base of the command. Now beyond that, we can add a source. So in this example, we're doing once again the closest mob and we're gonna do 30 damage using fire tick, which basically would be if your mob is caught on fire. So we spawn this in, you see it's a husk, since husks are not immune to fire, it will die. However, zombie pigmen are immune to fire, and so they won't die. See, it can't apply the damage because it's immune to fire. Now you can also apply a not only a source, in this example we're using entity attack right here, but we are also applying an entity meaning that's being hit by another mob, and then we're specifying what that other mob is. In this case, it's whatever the closest husk is going to be. And this time, we're going to be targeting a pillager. So if I spawn both of these in, and I press this command, now the pillager just got hit by the husk. Even though it dealt zero damage, it still thought it got hit, so now it's going to attack the husk. Right. And then another neat thing that we can do is we can adjust different death messages. So in this example, we're just going to use a tamed wolf because they have death messages. And we can see in this example, it's going to deal freezing damage. So it should say froze to death. In the next example, we're going to be using fire tick, so it'll say burn to death. And in this example, we're actually going to be using a source in this case, the closest player, which is me. Now it's going to be saying slain by cut to death. So there's a few different ways you can use that. You can maybe mess with your friends with death messages or do some other cool stuff with it. Um, it's just another neat little aspect of the damage command. Now in this example, we are going to basically be summoning a mob that is going to attack other mobs. So we're gonna execute a fishing hook. It's gonna summon a husk named soldier. Uh, it's going to give the husk a tag, that soldier. Then it's going to kill the fishing hook. And then up here on a repeating command block with a 60 tick delay, it's going to damage the soldier for zero of the nearest mob every three seconds. That's to make sure it'll constantly be getting new targets. One thing to note, if you do attack the mob yourself, it will likely prioritize you as a target once its current target is dead. So just be aware, try not to actually hit the mobs once you summon them in, unless you want them to attack you. So in this example, we're gonna use the fishing rod to summon it in, gonna have a target, and we'll even attack other husks. So we'll use a baby, summon it in, wait a second for it to get damaged, now it's going to go out and target it. And now I can give special effects to this guy, give him strength and speed, whatever I want. Uh, another important thing to note is that anytime a mob in Minecraft gets damaged for four ticks, which is one fifth of a second, it will be immune to any other type of damage. Now for this example, we're just going to do something a little more simple. We are going to be making a large explosion and we're going to apply damage. So to start off, we're going to use a fishing hook, we're going to make a particle effects, we're going to play explosion sounds, you can pause if you need to view any of these. We're gonna add a camera shake just to make it look more impactful. Uh, then we're gonna apply damage to 
we're going to apply damage to anything that's not a player within the radius of the fishing hook within six blocks. And then we're going to kill the fishing hook. So let's take this. And, you know, turn this on. Boom, instant explosion. It's going to be doing damage. We'll kill him in a few hits. Uh, we can even go here if we want. For now, it's a 10. We can do, say, 20, make it a really hard hitting explosion. And that's about it. And what you can also do is, uh, now currently the mobs are frozen, but this would also apply knockback if it wasn't. All right, that's it for the damage command tutorial. Uh, I'm going to follow up with some concerns from the last video. But if you are only here for the damage command, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you liked, if you enjoyed the video, uh, good for you, I guess. We do have a Discord uh, where you can discuss commands, and you're welcome to join. The link will be in the description. Uh, you're also welcome to leave your questions in the comments, and I will try to answer as many as I can. All right, so next up, we're going to be addressing some concerns from the last video. Last video, I said you couldn't give custom items. For instance, you wouldn't be able to tell between a named diamond and a regular diamond. And while that is true, there is technically some things you can do to get around that. However, there's also a ton of reasons that I don't recommend doing it, but just I'm going to show you how it works first. So this right here is a normal diamond. You can see here, if I'm testing for a normal diamond, this one's going to light up. If I'm testing for the special diamond, this one's going to stay dark. Now you may be wondering what I'm doing. Testing for a diamond with a data of zero in this command block. And this one, a diamond with a data of 100. Zero is the default for all items. So a normal item that you acquire for mining or whatever will almost always have zero for the majority of items that this works with. And then over here, I'm gonna give myself a diamond. I'm gonna give one with a value of 100. You can see it's not going to detect it over here, but it will detect it over here. So in that way, you are able to detect the difference between like a special item, and I, I can obviously give this a name and pretend it's a special item. Uh, the main reason I don't recommend doing this, there's a few. Uh, number one, doesn't work with a lot of items. Anything with durability, so any swords, any armor, any of that, any tools, you can't even use a shear or a shield. Uh, none of that's gonna work because the ID value on armor or anything with durability refers to its durability. Uh, same thing for a lot of colored blocks. So for instance, wool won't work, uh, carpet won't work, stained glass won't work. The reason is because they have multiple ID values. Usually it's to represent different colors. Uh, some other things that won't work, basically, uh, where is it, stones, any of these blocks pretty much won't work. Uh, so you kind of have to guess the test. Uh, so it doesn't work with the majority of blocks. The other reason I don't like it is there is a lot of ways you can duplicate items. So right now, I'm going to start off with zero. And let's say I get this special diamond. So you give this to players with commands for completing a quest. This is different than a normal diamond. So I get this normal diamond. You see, I have both. Now, if I take the normal diamond, which is this one, put it over here, now I have two special diamonds. So it's really easy to duplicate. Now, of course, you can name your special diamond something else. So they can't be duplicated. However, players have access to an anvil, they can circumvent that entirely. And additionally, it can kind of work the other way around. Uh, if I have this normal diamonds, I get the special diamonds. As you can see, they both went to normal. However, if I get this, I put the special diamonds to a normal one. Now I only have normal diamonds. So it is something you can use. I don't recommend it. However, if you can make use of it, then feel free to. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments or message me on Discord.